Seeing egos clash and maybe a plate or two shattering is a common sight on Hell's Kitchen. But here's a look at a few times when Master Chef was more like Master Kitchen. Uh, Hell's Chef? I don't know, I'll keep workshopping it. But while I do that, take a look at this time, when Chef Ramsay was confused about whether he should laugh or cry. You've gone bananas! You've gone bananas! I'm talking about none other than this contestant from Season 3. And this dude's presence in Episode 4 practically dragged the entire show down into the depths of Hell's Kitchen. Now, you might remember Ryan Umane, the guy with the smug attitude that could rival Chef Ramsay's stare. During the Duck Mystery Box Challenge, Chef Ramsay called down the top three contestants whose dishes stood out the most. When Ryan's name was called out, his hopes started to fly high, believing that he had it in the bag this time. I'm really not surprised that my plate is one of the top dishes. These other cooks are going to have to step up their game if they're going to want to compete with me. Yeah, humility was pretty much alien to this guy. I mean, he had the audacity to tell himself that he wasn't surprised to be in the top three. Little did he know what the top three actually was. You managed to cook what we think are the worst. I'm really not surprised. Well, maybe it's better to just wait for the final decision before completely popping off, huh? Talk about a premature celebration. Anyway, when the actual announcement was made, the smug grin on Ryan's face was gone in two seconds flat. But let's see what he presented that got him into this mess in the first place. Ryan had walked up with a balsamic rum glazed duck breast with caramelized bananas and sweet potato puree. Oh yeah, now doesn't that sound fancy? But taste is really the only thing that matters at the end of the day. You proud of this? And we all know how Joe gets when nasty food is put in front of him. So he asked Ryan if he was proud of his creation. But that was just the beginning. Rendered to the point of being dry. Yeah, you might have some crisp on the skin, but bananas? I mean, it's like, is this a joke? Oh yeah, Joe went all in and made a huge stink about how that crispy skin wasn't going to save the duck from the overcooked mess that it really was. Now, to be honest, I'd actually feel bad for the person receiving criticism, but hey, it's Ryan we're talking about. And this dude desperately needed a reality check before he went off the deep end. The cook on the banana is better than the cook on the duck. And then came Chef Ramsay, and if there's one thing that we know about him, is that he doesn't shy away from setting someone straight. Especially contestants were as cocky as Ryan. Which is why Ramsay unleashed a classic verbal beatdown straight out of his Hell's Kitchen playbook. Bananas with duck. You've gone bananas. That's what's happened. You've gone bananas. Uh-huh, clearly Ryan wasn't the genius that he thought he was. And he earned a good earful to set the record straight. You have managed to cook the duck. Everything else around that, dreadful. Now, when it was time for the elimination, Scott managed to skip the chopping block by getting a lifeline. And so, the decision was now between two contestants. But that's when Ryan decided to pull some strings. I just wanted to say that I'm not, definitely not ready to go home yet. And you were right, the hero of this dish was the duck. Oh man, I'd pay a million dollars if I had anywhere near that much money, that is, for him to shut up. Like, this is just embarrassing. Ryan did his damnedest to save himself, claiming that he wasn't ready to go home. What's more, he actually said the duck was the real hero of the dish. But, I mean, Chef Ramsay took another look at how overcooked it was, and... No begging, you're in this competition, competing, not judging. Let's get that right. Despite that, against all odds, Ryan survived to cook another day. Samantha, please take your apron off and place it on your station. You're leaving the competition. The fact that he survived elimination even after presenting a disaster of a dish and on top of a terrible attitude was just unfair if I'm being completely honest. But what about you? Don't forget to let me know in the comments section down below. And with that, let's head over to Season 10, Episode 2, which was all about flavor and one unexpected hero. I just can't believe and that I'm doing this. Like, this is my chance to start my dream, and I really want it to be true. Yep, that's Fred, the unassuming revenue analyst from California. Yeah, my first thought when I'm thinking MasterChef material definitely isn't revenue analysis. Anyway, things kicked off with only two aprons left, and Fred was on a mission to secure one of them. Now, Fred wasn't your typical MasterChef contestant. He was a shy, awkward guy who'd found courage thanks to his mom's encouragement. Let's just say this guy wasn't just here to cook, but he was here to conquer. Black vinegar and Ovaltine infused chocolate cake with matzah mascarpone cream. If you thought that was the end of that massive description of his, you're so wrong. Caramelized white chocolate and burnt miso ganache, togarashi walnut crumble, chocolate twigs, and edible flowers. I mean, wow, way to paint a word picture, dude. Fred had prepared a black vinegar infused chocolate cake with a mouth-watering array of toppings. But it wasn't just about the ingredients, it's about the passion he poured into each element. 
And trust me, his mom's influence was evident in his determination to make her proud. As the judges eyed his peculiar creation, Chef Ramsay and Aaron exchanged amusing glances. But hold it right there, because Fred was about to blow their minds. And before you know it, the moment of truth arrived and Fred's masterpiece was unveiled. Visually, absolutely stunning. Thank you. Beautiful. The chocolate twigs, edible flowers, and the artistic meandering of mascarpone cream immediately caught the judges' attention. And yeah, the tension was definitely building as they took their first bites. So light. This is like delicious. serious. Thank you. Well, that was just the beginning of the praise Fred was in for. Aaron commended its decadence. Ooey gooey decadent. As for Joe, you have to see his reaction for yourselves. But it's also so smart because yeah. it's all those things, but it's not. But it really wasn't the reaction that was the highlight of the episode. Just you wait till you see what Chef Ramsay had to say. <laughs> Gentlemen, insane. It's gone. The famous chef left everyone shocked when he kept going back for more, scraping the plate with his fork, and then did this. And I think that says it all right I guess there. Gordon likes it. Yup, he literally licked it clean. I mean, that's a golden moment right there. It's not every day that Chef Ramsay even bothers finishing a dish, even if it's outstanding. The drama reached its peak as Chef Ramsay, without waiting for any verbal judgments, did something totally, well, unexpected. There's no debate. That's a yes. Take that. <laughs> yup, he tossed an apron at Fred, laughing in pure delight. He even declared Fred as his new culinary hero. But that's not the end of it. Chef Ramsay then, in a move that could only be described as absolutely insane, left the audience in pure shock. <laughs> he took the plate back to his seat, and you won't believe what he did next. It's thought provoking. Look at that. <laughs> Yup, he smashed it on the floor, a mic drop that echoed through the MasterChef kitchen. The other judges were left in awe, and Fred, well, he was the guy who turned a cooking competition into a plate-licking, mic-dropping spectacle. While moments like these are seldom seen on MasterChef, let's admit that when it comes to genuine drama, especially the spicy kind, there's no shortage. Like, take for instance what happened in Season 8, Episode 18, where Jeff faced the heat like never before. No! This time, Jeff was the sixth contestant in the hot seat. Now, normally, contestants control their own time in the elimination round, but not today. Kate, having won the mystery box challenge, held the power to assign time limits, turning up the pressure on Jeff. It's got barely 15 minutes to go. I've got no idea how he's gonna pull this off. So, what does he whip up in those 15 minutes that he was left with? Well, check this out. So what we have here is a salmon filet with a Mediterranean vibe to it there. A little bit of feta cheese and sundry tomato relish over a nice apple and pear, cucumber, gratin, cranberry, and stout beer. Huh, that's an ambitious mouthful, right? Well, not really. Jeff. That's exactly what I want. Jeff Ramsey questioned Jeff about how well cooked his salmon was supposed to be. Now Jeff had aimed for medium rare, but if Chef Ramsay is asking you what the cook of a piece of meat is supposed to be with that kind of expression, yeah, you better believe you dropped something completely raw in front of him. He went on to make a crazy comparison too. It's weird. It's like sushi there. The fibers haven't even gone. Look. Damn. But Jeff wasn't ready to back down either. Snarky as ever, he defended his rare salmon the best that he could. But that's what I was going for. I wanted it to be on the rarer side. I really don't know who he was trying to convince, because as you know, he barely had 15 minutes to prepare the dish. There is absolutely no way that he could have actually cooked the salmon all the way through in that time. So his only option was rare. However, he really wasn't budging from his lie. Are you saying you wanted it that rare? Yes. Chef Ramsay knows every single trick in the book as far as lying is concerned, and what was his response? Stout and cranberries and gratin and cucumber and raw salmon with feta cheese don't go. Period. Oh yeah, he left no stone unturned to slam Jeff's dish. Honestly, the combination of raw salmon, cucumber, apple gratin, and feta cheese just wasn't hitting. But wait, things were about to get juicier. Enter Dino, and this guy decided to have a little bit of fun. Were we allowed to make sushi? No. You couldn't be wrong. But why do you serve it raw? He playfully asked Jeff about making sushi and questioned why he served raw salmon. Jeff told Dino to go make spaghetti and meatballs instead. Wow, super original insult for the Italian in the room, buddy. And well, that is how the Clash of Titans began. Go make a spaghetti and meatball. Go make a what? Go make another spaghetti and meatball. And what do you know, Dino fired back real quick. We're making a spaghetti meatball for your lady tonight. 
Oh yeah, nobody gets one over Dino. It almost seemed like he was poking fun at him just to make him feel bad, and I guess he succeeded because Jeff's reply was brutal. Yourself. <laughs> And as time passed and more words were exchanged, the fight only seemed to get worse. Should they make the $250,000 up to your therapist or to you? Damn, Jeff may not know how to cook a decent dish, but he sure knows how to fire back at someone. But again, nobody gets one over Dino. I'm already insured. Okay, I just wanna make sure that that's covered. My therapist is already paid for it. Okay. The atmosphere grew tense and the fight escalated to the point that the judges needed to intervene. And finally, it was time for the verdict. Chef Ramsay, unimpressed by Jeff's dish and his defensive attitude, dropped the bomb. Yeshika. Just wait, because just when Jeff thought he was bidding farewell to Yachicha, Chef Ramsay decided to drop in another bomb. And Jeff. If you ever want to know what brutal means in practice, just rewatch this clip. But I don't think you're ever going to be able to forget it. Nobody expected a double elimination. As for Jeff, when Chef Ramsay asked him about how he felt about the turn of events, he admitted that he felt humbled, thanked his competitors, and bid farewell to the Master Chef kitchen. What a damn journey, man. But when it comes to Master Chef, the heat isn't just limited to the kitchen. I'm talking about the most jaw-dropping and heart-pounding moments from episode 3 of season 3, where one contestant took the spotlight during the auditions. So Stacy was the first contender of the day, and she walked in with all the confidence in the world armed with her dish. Hello. Hello, I'm Stacy. And what was she bringing to the table, you ask? Well, here you go. So where did the inspiration for cooking come from? So there she was, rocking the Master Chef scene with a New York strip that had an espresso crust and a chimichurri sauce that she hoped would be a showstopper to end all showstoppers. Well, not gonna lie, from the looks of it, it looked downright delicious. I'm talking about the kind of plate that makes you question your loyalty to your go-to takeout joint. And get this, where she was from, fast food was pretty much all that was available. In any case, to pull off a masterpiece that not only tasted divine, but also looked like a foodie's dream, now that was some next level kitchen sorcery right there. But hey, it's not always about the looks now, is it? Look at it, it's a dream. What's the dish? What are you doing? Uh, well, I'm gonna sous vide this dish. Sous vide it? Yeah. Uh, the moment Chef Ramsay makes a face like that, consider it bad news. But guess what Tally did? He decided to suck all the flavor out of the char before he even thought about serving it. Because who needs flavor, right? It's an oily fish. Why would you sous vide that? It cooks it in its own juices and it keeps that flavor locked. And do I even need to talk about Joe's reaction? Well, if you're out of the loop, let me get you up to speed. Completely unnecessary. Arctic char is certainly the easiest fish here today. Yeah. You could steam it, grill it, saute it. He didn't even realize what he was doing. Going by the initial reaction from the judges, I kind of guessed that Tally was inevitably going to find himself in the bottom three. Serving green lentils with it, bacon, mustard. All those flavors are going to obliterate it. Anyway, the judges walked around to see what the home cooks came up with, but Tally's dish failed to make much of an impression. Trial run. Yeah. Now, instead of taking what Chef Ramsay had to say seriously, this is what Tally decided to clap back with. It's frustrating when Chef Ramsay interrupts me, and it's kind of like interrupting a master artist. What was this? The joke of the season? Yeah, I don't think so. Anyway, time ran out, and it was time to see what the home cooks had whipped up. First up was Felix with her poached halibut, bamboo rice, asparagus, and lemon apple sauce. And boy oh boy, the judge's initial warnings to avoid the halibut came back to bite her big time. You have the advantage for yourself. Are you here to win? I'm here to win. I think at this point, Felix was dying to tell Joe to just shut up and taste the dish already. I mean, if I was in her place, that's exactly what I'd be feeling. But you definitely can't rush a guy like Joe. After all, you gotta wait for him to cook up a brutal response first. Totally overcooked the fish. More importantly, how you can let an opportunity like that slide by you. Anyway, up next, it was time for Chef Ramsay, and let's see what he had to say. Um, slightly dry. So it's not your best? Unfortunately, you're sort of halfway. When Chef Ramsay said halfway up the ladder, I think that was kind of generous. And Graham twisted the knife when he asked her when she was planning on getting serious. Well, you have to see her reaction to this. I don't know, I wanted to challenge myself with a halibut. But just as she was explaining herself, Graham dropped a remark, and I swear, it felt like she shriveled up and died on the spot. How badly do you want to win? Do you feel good that, well, at least I challenged myself and I made no. a pretty crappy halibut dish? 
But wait, 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 because things were about to get even more embarrassing. Sorry, Felix, but your plan backfired because she did nail it. As for Tally, well, he stepped up to the judges with his arctic char and green lentils. And don't let his easier fish fool you, the judges were just as brutal. Joe straight up told him that he was consistently letting them down. What do chefs do? Chefs cook. So it's not master orator or master tell me about what my intention is about cooking, it's master chef. And nope, he didn't stop there. He continued to embarrass Tally. You have a bunch of herb scraps with no dressing on, on top of some poorly conceived cooked arctic char. Anyway, here comes the savage chef Ramsay, and what was his verdict? You're misinterpreting the competition. It's master chef, not master bait. Oh man, believe me, I never saw that coming. Honestly, when it comes to insults, Chef Ramsay's got the market cornered. But he wasn't done yet. The premonition that his fish would end up flavorless ended up coming to the pass, and he made that clear to Tally. But Tally hit back with this whole judges are too old school to appreciate my food attitude. Dude, get over yourself. In the end, after some deliberation, Monty and Frank emerge as the heroes with some actually outstanding dishes. They secured their spots as the team captains for the next challenge. On the flip side, David, Tally, and Christine were in for a reckoning. Or, well, at least David and Tally. Christine did get a pass and was safe for the day. But now, brace yourself, because Tally ended up on the receiving end of one hell of an elimination. About time, right? Now, how many of you wanted Dave to leave? Don't you think that he dodged a bullet way too many times despite how terrible his food was? If you agree, make sure to leave a like down below, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my Discord server for free, which is the best platform to keep the discussion going. What's more, you can also become a member of my channel by hitting this tab right here. From making video recommendations to sharing some crazy behind the scenes moments, being a member has more perks to offer than you can imagine. In the meantime, let me walk you over to the mystery box challenge of season 15. This is when each contestant got their mystery box ingredients to whip up something magical in under 60 minutes. You've got one hour. Show us that you mean business. But here's the catch. The judges were only tasting three dishes, so the contestants had to impress them with a top-notch presentation. Eventually, Adrian was crowned as the mystery box champ, and he got to strut into the Master Chef pantry and handpick the ingredient for the elimination test. And what was the theme for that week? Well, check this out. Theme for today's elimination test is desserts. Desserts. But Adrian got to play a little devilish game. Maybe serve up his fellow competitors their just desserts in the process? Which ingredient are you choosing for you and for your competitors? And his options were coffee, pineapples, and nuts. Adrian walked back to the kitchen after choosing nuts for himself and coffee for everybody else. And let me tell you, that revelation got a hell of a mixed reaction. Come on, seriously? Coffee's something I love, it's something I know. Fast forward 90 minutes after a hell of an intense cooking session, but that's its own story, and then it was judgment time. Adrian stepped up first, and this is what Graham said after tasting his dessert. Well, it seems like you chose chocolate as your ingredient. The nuts are just kind of a garnish on top. Chef Ramsay was also disappointed. You can't really identify what we've done different from the nuts on top to the nuts inside that mixture. Despite having the advantage, Adrian still messed up the challenge. And trust me, Joe didn't plan on coddling this guy either. I think you took an incredible advantage and squandered it. Well, he definitely wasn't wrong. Adrian had blown his one opportunity. But guess what? He wasn't the only one. There were bad dishes all around, including Jenny, who had the audacity to serve up a raw tart. But to make a very long story short, the three names were eventually announced. Jenny with her raw tart, Alvin with what Chef Ramsay called a coffee blood clot, ouch, and you'd expect Adrian to be number three, right? Well, I've got some news for you. Forget about Adrian, I haven't even gotten started on Max yet. So let's rewind a little bit. Max stepped up, armed with desserts that seemed to be designed to embarrass the living daylights out of himself. Chef Ramsay took the first bite, and guess how he reacted? Damn. Yup, he went silent. Oh man, it was one of those moments where you could almost feel the tension through the screen. Instead of just giving his verdict right away, Chef Ramsay threw a curveball at Max and asked him to taste it. And what did Max do? It's like I've just gone to the doctors for a skin graft on my butt and stuck it in caramel. That is a horrible, 
weird <laughs> texture. He stood there, beaming with confidence. He was smiling as if he had just served up a dessert fit for a king. But hold on, Chef Ramsay wasn't letting him off the hook that easy. He laid down the brutal truth about how embarrassing his dessert was at this level of the competition. You'd think Max would be shrinking into a puddle of shame, right? Nope, he was grinning from ear to ear for some reason. Next, it was time for Graham to take a bite, and how do you think he reacted? <laughs> yeah, his face spoke a lot more than his words. He just could not come to terms with what he had just eaten. And then, he went on to deliver a final blow. He called out the dish for its horrible texture and basically warned him that he should be seriously worried. You know, the fact that it's an elimination test, it's serious. I mean, the situation was so embarrassing that Awkward doesn't even begin to cover it. Anyway, time to cut to the chase. Chef Ramsay didn't hold back, stating that Jenny's dish was a serious contender for being the worst dish of the night, but guess what? Two others were even worse, so luckily she was in the clear. This time. Now, when it came to Alvin, Chef Ramsay delivered the gut punch. His dish took the crown for being the worst of the night, and it was time for him to say goodbye. Ouch. But hey, at least Alvin got a parting note about being courageous, but needing to nail the basics before moving forward. And on the bright side, look at who survived to cook another day. You. Back on your station. Thank you, chef. Mystery box challenges never cease to amaze me. And this one from season 6 is no different for all the wrong reasons. So, what happened is, Derek was named the man of the hour, and part of his advantage, he got to choose the fate of the elimination challengers. Your first advantage is that you not have to cook in tonight's elimination challenge. But as always, there's a twist. <laughs> a TV dinner. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Mom's meatloaf. <laughs> Look at this beauty. <laughs> It was all about elevating something everyone's pulled out of their freezer at some point, a TV dinner. But not just any TV dinner, oh no. The options were turkey, meatloaf, or Salisbury steak, each featuring a judge's face with a fake mustache because why not, right? Now, Derek got to pick just one of them and the contestants had to whip up a gourmet version in just one hour. <laughs> Salisbury steak with a broccoli and mac and cheese. Salisbury steak with mac and cheese and broccoli was on the menu. Veronica was practically celebrating since she'd been a TV dinner connoisseur for 59 years. I'm not sure if I should be proud or scared for her. Salisbury steak is one of my favorite dishes. But hold on, there was a wicked twist to come. Derek, reveling in his final advantage, got to play the puppet master. He could pick one contestant who had to stand there and do nothing for the first 15 minutes. Derek, grinning from ear to ear, singled out Christopher. And believe me, things were about to get heated. I can't really believe that Derek would target me. I'm so angry right now, I could see a steak on my forehead. Meanwhile, Jesse decided to go all out with venison meat and planned to whip up some fried mac and cheese. And this is when he found out something. If there's one thing I've loved in this country is mac and cheese. I've never had a fried mac and cheese. I've had it before and I've cooked it before, but I'll have to see if I can get that. Turns out, Chef Ramsay had never tried fried mac and cheese, and you could practically hear the collective gas from all around. Meanwhile, Veronica got a gentle nudge from Christina about her usual lackluster presentation. Every time we've had something that's delicious from you, presentation, how you've elevated it visually, what do you have planned? Well, consider that a warning. Christina also wanted to know what Veronica had up her sleeve, and guess what was Veronica's response? She said that it would look like a TV dinner. And this left the judges baffled. It's already set for me. It's going to look like a TV dinner. Okay, you, you did hear the point. Christina, trying to maintain her composure, asked Veronica if she heard what the challenge was all about. It was to elevate the TV dinner and make it restaurant quality. Well, of course, Veronica knew the rules. It's just that she couldn't care less. She made a casual hand move towards the judges to dismiss their apprehensions and then said, My grandkids are waiting to hear you guys say awesome. Oops, it looks like Granny's got her own rules. But this next contestant left Ramsey at a loss for words. I feel incredibly ready to win this whole thing. The whole competition. I didn't, I didn't come here to lose. Let's see if it was well-founded. Meet Mark Togni, arguably one of the worst cooks of that season. However, things didn't go as planned when Chef Ramsay singled out the contestants whose dishes stood out the most. Sam, Heather, Mark, 
I don't okay, let's go. Mark was left speechless. His joy was through the roof. Nevertheless, Chef Ramsay then made a crazy revelation. Mark, Heather, and Sam, you three stood out for all the wrong reasons. Yup, the judges were seriously let down by the subpar performance of the bottom three contestants, being Mark, Sam, and Heather. But things were about to take a turn for the worst. When it was time to taste Mark's dish, Chef Christina laid it all out by giving a brutally honest opinion. The pancake, it just, it has problems, it's undercooked. But wait, there's more. Stuck on the plate is like the finesse isn't there. The hash brown, it almost looks like a piece of meat. Everything about the dish seemed to be way, way off. Especially my all-time favorite, the hash brown. I mean, come on, all that confidence earlier and this is what you came up with? However, instead of just owning up to his mistake, Mark thought that making excuses would be the best way out. I feel like it was the fourth quarter with two minutes left and I ran out of the field without my helmet or my jock strap. But Chef Ramsay had little patience for excuses, especially those infused with football jargon. In fact, Chef Christina also found the dish utterly disappointing. Knowing Mike's potential, she recalled the impressive ravioli that earned him an apron. And somehow, he found it necessary to resort to dropping some convoluted football terminology in his defense. Either way, Mike eventually found himself in the elimination test. And instead of working towards regaining the judge's confidence, he decided to take his sweet, sweet time getting things done. Um, I've been in this position in my life before. Pressure is my middle name. When Chef Christina walked over to him for an update, at first, he claimed to be working on a redo of his pancakes with chocolate chips and baked eggs on the side. But then, he said something that left her completely confused. If you don't execute the basic play first, then why you didn't try the flea flicker? Back to the football analogies. This guy was a caricature of sports, bro. I mean, could someone please remind him that he wasn't on a football field, but in the master chef kitchen? Because just take a look at the pace he was working at. Chef Christina was legitimately concerned for him. Looks like Mark doesn't care. I might want to switch up here. Yeah, she kind of had his attitude all figured out. But the famous chef was about to experience it firsthand. At the 10 minute mark, when Chef Ramsay decided to share a word of wisdom with Heather, Mike made a comment that pissed Chef Ramsay the hell off. You know what you can do, Heather? Just do what I do and ignore them. I mean, who does this guy think he is? The famous chef had had enough with the guy, and he decided to confront him once and for all. Is this a joke for you? No. Is this just a big show for your mates? No. Take it serious or take your apron off. And believe me, it wasn't a mere threat, it was an ultimatum. And with just two minutes left on the clock, Mark wasn't getting any more respectful. Mark, you still got one minute. Mark, I'm, I'm working it. The audacity of this man surprises me even after I've watched these clips hundreds of times after putting this video together. Now, fast forward to the tasting, and Mark was so incredibly confident about his dish. But the famous chef wasn't anywhere near matching his energy. That is tough to look at. And when Chef Ramsay asked him if that was the best that he could do, guess what he had to say? Yes. I successfully completed the 28th sweep, but I think I scored a touchdown. Even he thought he was being a douche, and you know what? I couldn't agree more. Meanwhile, the famous chef wondered if Mark really had the passion and hunger to reach the top of the competition. As for Christina, well, considering she all but babied him every step of the way, seeing him fail like this was just not fun for her. And then that bacon you put in uncooked. Why not sear the bacon off beforehand? Although she found that the pancake was cooked properly, there was a looming question that bothered her. Really just a matter of whether a chocolate chip pancake and baked eggs is worthy of this competition. With a dish like that and an attitude to match, one thing was sealed, Mark's fate in the competition. Sam and Heather, make your way to the balcony. He had it coming. Mark was then eliminated for failing to improve on his previous dish, and more so for his disrespectful attitude throughout the entire challenge. But this next contestant can rival Mark when it comes to being a smartass. Yep, I'm talking about Jeff from season 8, and boy was he a handful. I mean, he's one of those contestants who mess with not just his competitors, but also the judges. Now, I gotta highlight this elimination challenge specifically when things started to get a little heated. This time, the judges threw an unusual curveball, where the contestants would not be performing solo. All of these home cooks right here are going to be competing in teams of two. Jason decides who will be paired up for tonight's challenge. That's right, teams of two. Which means it all came down to communication, collaboration, and self-control. Now, having won the mystery box challenge, Bowen was tasked with picking the pairs. And guess who ended up with Jeff? Jeff's kind of roar will swallow up this person's voice. Caitlin, I pair you with Jeff. Yeah, it was just a disaster waiting to happen. 
So, for the elimination test, the contestants were tasked with preparing an amazing Mexican platter. We have some homemade tortilla chips with the wonderful pico de gallo. Right next to that, we have this spot prawn ceviche with avocado and shaved radish. If this test wasn't already hard enough, Chef Christina then dropped a bomb that shook things up even further. You're not going to be cooking together at the same time. One of you starts cooking, and your partner must stand at the end of your station. And nope, she didn't stop there. When we shout, switch, you will trade position. Believe me, the pressure was insane. Because one of the pears started to crumble like no other. Sear the meat first, though. Yep, exactly. Whee! Yup, Jeff and Caitlin were struggling to get grips with the situation. Although they were off to a great start, soon they started to face challenges they never even imagined about. The chips done, done. and out of the way. I make tortilla chips all the time. Don't need that right now. Looks like someone is going through some major power dynamic issues. If you ask me, I think Jeff was just throwing unnecessary dominance into the mix in an attempt to control Caitlyn's every move. Well, can someone please introduce him to the concept of teamwork, please? I mean, things got so obvious that even Chef Ramsay was quick to notice the growing power struggle. Look at how controlling Jeff is. Um... Like, why am I even surprised? Now, don't forget that this was the same guy who didn't shy away from arguing with THE Gordon Ramsay at every chance that he got. So, of course he was gonna try to assert his dominance wherever, whenever, and to whoever he could, right? Chef Christina had a different take on the matter, though. According to her, Caitlyn just wasn't strong enough to stand her ground, and, well, in a way, both of them were at fault. One for being too submissive, and the other for being overly assertive. Interesting take, but she's not wrong. Because you can't deny that it was just painful to watch Jeff trying to be the boss. Especially when he didn't even command that kind of respect in the first place. For the peak of the guy, I can do this part. Jeff completely ignored Caitlyn's presence and went ahead on his own. In his desperate attempt to have everything come out perfectly, he forgot the main goal of the challenge. Yup, there's the whole notion of teamwork again. Strange how it keeps coming up, huh? Chef Aaron even came up to their station and told Caitlyn that they needed to communicate better in order to work things out. But even then, Jeff's attitude towards Caitlyn continued to be as cold as ice. Those aromatics thing, you need to season that again for the vegetables. I am going to, and I know what we have to do. Correction, he was downright rude. Anyway, when it was time to present their dish, Jeff wanted something to be made known to the judges. I took a leading role with this entire tag team challenge. Caitlyn didn't bring a lot to the table. My guy, it's because you didn't even let her. What's more, according to him, they failed to get the small details right, but everything else was on point. But Jeff's opinion didn't really matter, least of all here. First things first, Chef Ramsay made it clear that their inability to communicate and work things through as a team was frustrating to watch. And to make things worse, when he asked what they'd rate their platter, while Caitlyn said a 3 or 4 at best, Jeff's answer went in a completely different direction. I beg to differ. I would actually have gone a little bit higher. I would have gone a 7 because everything is there. At this point, Chef Ramsay was so upset with him. Because everything's there, it doesn't mean that this is on a 7. I am not going to accept that. In fact, the famous chef was beyond disappointed. Now, let's go to the churros. 7 is not. Let's get that right. He decimated their platter saying that the lamb looked like dog food, he wouldn't even bother looking at the tacos, and four of their churros would equal one actual churro. But that's not all. I was working as fast as I can to shred it with two forks and... I think that about says it all. To add insult to injury, Ramsay said that the only thing that he loved was the china that they served the food on. The one thing that they had absolutely zero part in making. Anyway, when it was time to decide who went home, the result was pretty obvious. No, it wasn't Jeff, it was Caitlyn, for letting Jeff walk all over her. As Caitlyn left with her head low, she brought a lesson well learned with her. In MasterChef, there was no space for contestants who can't take charge and speak up for themselves. Now, here's your turn to weigh in. Could you think of more times when chefs made stupid mistakes? Well, make sure to drop your thoughts in the comments section down below. And hey, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Now, if you thought this video was crazy, then make sure to check my social media pages for all my recent content. And this next video right here, well, it's even better, so you better not miss it.